Welcome civil engineers, learn faster with civil engineering tips. So this video is about the preliminary design of beam and column as per Indian standard IS code. Okay, let's start with beam design. Here you can see the deflection criteria and the moment criteria. We use two different criteria for finding the size of beam and selecting the size of beam in such a way that whichever we get the maximum dimension of width and depth of the beam from these two conditions okay let's start from deflection criteria here you can see l by d ratio l is the largest length of the beam slash critical beam longest span okay and d is the depth of the beam here you can see l by d ratio as student you can take this value from 10 to 15 from with reference to IS code 456-2000 clause 23.2.1 you cannot get this exact value in the code but due to multiplication of various factors only you can get this value okay let's quickly look into this code okay here you can see 23.2.1 clause from IS 456-2000 here you can see 7, 20 and 26 okay when these values are multiplied by certain modification factor as mentioned in these points we can get that particular value okay this l by 2 ratio now take l l is the largest length of the beam critical beam so we have to choose the length of the beam in such a way that that particular beam carries the maximum load and its length is of longer span okay here you can see in picture this red color line this is beam okay this is the longest beam in this plan longest span okay that is how we select the length of the beam okay and looking into the plan this beam carries the maximum load okay now simply putting this value of L and this constant we can get the depth of the beam okay and we round off this value to 500 mm okay similarly with d by b ratio as 1.5 so normally the width of the beam is taken as the multiple of 0.5 to 0.75 or simply can take 1.5 okay and simply putting this value you can get this the size width of the beam and providing beam size of 340 by 500 mm. look into this green cell okay now moving into the moment criteria here you can see the live load and the dead load okay i have put these values here so when we will be doing the ETAPS analysis then at the time we will learn in detail about these load calculation and where we get these live load and dead loads okay for now simply i have put four so here i have made commercial plan so i have taken four kilonewton per meter square of live load floor finish as 1.2 thickness of slab as 1.15 meter that is six inches height of wall 2.438 meter that is eight feet okay similarly 0.2 meter nine inches and the length of the beam which we just taken here okay that is the critical beam and width of the beam and depth of the beam okay you can choose it this size from the above deflection criteria or you can simply put this value okay so now here you can see here in row 36 shaded area okay you can simply calculate the area of shaded portion okay here you can see in plan okay how we create this shaded portion we'll talk about this or to calculate the area you can simply measure the area from the AutoCAD and put this value here okay so I have made some formulas here okay, so simply after putting the adjacent length of the beam towards left and right here you can see okay after changing this value it will automatically give the shaded portion area okay quickly look into this AutoCAD drawing okay I will copy it Okay, now let's see here here you can see these yellow lines okay these yellow lines are the E line which are drawn at an angle of 45 degree okay you can see here 45 degree okay all these selected lines are beam okay you can see here these lines are beams and these yellow lines are 
yield line okay which are drawn at an angle 45 degree so from the intersection point these lines are drawn at an angle of 45 degree and intersect at this point similarly with these two lines intersect at this point okay and joining these two intersection by this red line okay that is how yield lines are formed similarly doing the same process will get this value okay for now we have taken this beam as the critical beam that carries maximum load okay so our shaded portion shaded area is this here you can see the hatching hatching okay this center beam carries the load of this shaded portion okay so that is why we need the area of this shaded portion okay and look here the length of this beam is 5945 mm and the adjacent beam to the right is 4585 and to the left is 5180 okay simply you can measure the area of this hatching portion from the AutoCAD or you can simply put the adjacent beam length here okay you can see here this figure so let's put here for now 100 here you can see your 100 okay this value changes automatically okay and for now i'll take control z okay when you put this adjacent beam length right and left then it will automatically give the shaded area okay now calculating to the total load applied on that beam okay load applied on that beam is of dead load and live load okay total load is calculated as shown here okay where well, here you can see the gamma c and gamma w gamma c these are the unit weight okay now load from live load okay live load is four times here area of shaded portion okay similarly with four finish and similarly with the slab and this one is with wall and this one is for beam itself self weight okay and you can get this putting these values you can get the value of total load and multiplying this factor okay this load by 1.5 to convert it into factored load okay here you can see lb it is the length of the critical beam which we just selected okay so that we can get here the load in per meter okay now here you can see the maximum booming moment as wl square by 10 this is for continuous beam in our case the beam is continuous so the maximum moment is taken as wl square by 10 okay here same the formula wl square by 10 okay when your when your beam is simply supported you should take here as wl square by 8 okay wl square simply double click it change it value to 8 okay you can change it like this okay so for now let's make it as 10 now you can simply change the grade of concrete and grade of steel so depending upon this grade of steel uh, this mu limiting value can be changed okay let's see here in is code in is 456 2000 here you can see nxg clause 38.1 from clause 38.1 first let's see here nxg for rectangular section you can see the moment mu limiting okay moment here 0.36 times xu maximum by d so you can get this xu by d value from the clause okay you can get this value from is 456 2000 here you can see the different value for mile steel tor steel and tmt you can see you can get this value from code okay and putting this value you can get the certain multiplication factor times b d square by fcg okay simply putting those values here okay you can get this formula okay now i will show you here you can see the multiplication factor at 0 0.336 now when we change it to 415 you can change it okay you can see the changes here at 0 0.138 okay that is how you take this formula depending upon the grade of steel okay now simply putting values and calculating depth required okay and this is just rounding up and 
taking these values factor d by b ratio as 1.5 or you can take the multiplication factor from between 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 okay so that is how we calculate the depth and width of the beam now here you can see providing larger dimension of beam of size 340 mm by 500 that is the maximum dimension we get from moment criteria and deflection criteria method okay here you can see this one is for calculating the area okay calculating the area of shaded portion this is trapezoidal this one is trapezoidal simply applying the trapezoidal formula that is a plus b by 2 into h okay a means this side b means this side and height means this one okay you can simply get this area from AutoCAD or you can show this as well okay here I have shown okay manually done calculation okay now okay this NX 456-2000 now let's move into the preliminary design of colon okay here you can see the shaded area AC okay similarly similar with the beam okay look here in the beam here you can see the red line that is the critical beam okay that carries the maximum load and with with the formation of this yield line we create the shaded portion area that this red line beam will carry that particular load similarly with this column here you can see the red line that is the column and drawn yield line from the center point of this adjacent beam okay and this shaded area look here here you can see the formula as finding the shaded area okay that is just rectangular area length times breadth okay you can add this area and so to verify here you can see another picture here okay this dimension are clearly shown here that is how you should take the dimensions for calculating the area of shaded portion okay now number of floors okay this number of floors okay you can choose as for your requirement okay and here is length of beam look here this is the summation of this adjacent beam of this shaded portion adjacent beam inside this shaded area okay that is the summation of those length okay and depth and width of the beam you can take whatever you like and then we can change the value or simply I suggest you to select this value that we you get from preliminary design of beam okay and height of the wall and thickness of the wall and now again calculating this load total load on that particular column okay simply putting these assigned value we can get the total load okay here I have put some formula and similarly multiplying this 1.5 look here you can see the factor 1.5 converting it into the factor load now that this load can be used for calculating the gross area okay so for that let's let us assume the percentage of steel as 1.2 and fy okay fy grade of steel as 500 and grade of concrete as 25 this one here you can see this formula get this formula from indian standard code is 456 2000 i will show you here okay clause 39.3 short axially loaded member in compression okay okay so you have to look the condition then only apply the formula to calculate the values okay here you can see p equal to 0 0.4 times fck ac plus 0 0.67 fy as okay p means axial load okay fck means characteristic compressive strength similarly with ac is area of concrete okay characteristic strength of compression reinforcement and area from the reinforcement for column okay we take this formula from this code okay and all these value 
putting all these value in this particular equation we can get the gross area okay and here now for the dimension you can use the square root of this gross area so that you can find the required dimension okay so here we have assumed the square column so providing the size of 540 mm by 540 mm okay this is how we calculate the size of the beam and the column before analysis okay after analysis there are the certain criteria that we have to check so checking that criteria we have to change the dimension as well okay as per our requirement to pass the building okay so this is it keep learning like share and subscribe to civil engineering tips for learning faster peace out